Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Good to see you all. Sean, what are you talking about? Modern women exposed? Are you serious? Women have already exposed themselves, bro. Haven't you seen the way they dress these days? <laughs> Very funny, guys. Very funny. Ha ha ha. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about, right? We're not going to discuss that today. Um, I'm not talking about revealing outfits and, and um, or women's nature. Uh, what I'm going to discuss today is how we can expose... Not just women, but, you know, other people, whether a man or a woman, in, in, in a loving way, you know, to get them to correct their behavior rather than um, having them turn against you, you know. Um, you see, nobody, nobody likes being exposed, okay. Now, remember Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, after they ate the fruit, what's the first thing that they did? You know, they went to hide their nakedness, you know, because they knew that their nakedness was exposed, okay? And, and God asked Adam, he went to Adam and he said, did you eat of the tree that I commanded you not to eat? And, and what did Adam say? He said, oh, well, you're the one who put me here with that woman. <laughs> you know, she's the one who caused me to sin. So, you know, Adam pushed the blame off on the Eve. And so the Lord turned to Eve and said, hey, Eve, um, what, what do you, have, what do you have to say for yourself? Huh? And, and she said, well, well, it was the serpent. <laughs> it was the serpent. He's the one who beguiled me. He's the one who tricked me. He seduced me. <sighs> you say, you see, anytime anybody gets exposed, it's just in our human nature to point the blame to someone else, right? It's, it's just, just how we, it's just how we, you know, how humans are. Our natural response is to shift the blame, somebody else, why? Because nobody likes getting exposed. Nobody does, okay, you know? Now, I'm not recording this message, you know, because I want, because I want to, exactly, you know? Because I don't want to get exposed, you know? Me just putting myself out there in the spotlight opens me up for attack, opens me up to get exposed, right? So, I don't make these videos to be famous or popular, um... Uh, because I, I realize the danger of getting exposed, right? You know, uh, the reason I make these videos is is because I want is mainly because they help me, right? They help me, you know. They help me understand my own faults. They help me become a better Christian. Um, they help me become a better man in general, you know. And also, as as a as I guess a byproduct is they help you guys too, and they encourage you guys, and and we can all learn from each other. Um, so I say all that to just say this, you know. I don't want to be the one to have to do this. Nobody wants to, don't kill the messenger here, right? But at the same time, you know, somebody got to say it. The truth's got to get spoken, you know? Somebody's got to pull the curtain, pull the curtain back and, and um, but, you know, I want you guys to reflect while I pull this curtain back, you know, reflect on the fact that you probably have skeletons in your own closet um, that you don't want getting exposed, right? Um, I know... I know I wouldn't want um, all my skeletons in my closet to get exposed, so um, keeping that in mind, let's humble ourselves, and here we go. I'm going to start with a reading from the King James Bible, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter number 8, chapter number 8, verses... Um, Verse 1 through 11, okay? Ten short verses. It says here, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down, and he taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery, and then we had set, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, so they're tempting Jesus, that they might not have but that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. 
as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that was out, he that was he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted of their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus lifted himself up, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Word of the Lord. The first thing that I notice in these verses, guys, is the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, Jesus was at the temple early in the morning, right? And the scribes and the Pharisees brought this woman in adultery, you know? The first thing I noticed is the scribes and the Pharisees, they should have been in church. You know, why weren't they in church? Jesus was at church early in the morning, and he was teaching a lesson. And instead of them being there with Jesus learning the lesson, what were they doing? They were out uh, trying to find this woman and accusing her of something. And ultimately, they were trying to tempt Jesus, right? That was their whole point. But, you know, Jesus woke up early in the morning to go to church. But these guys thought it was more important to go catch this woman in adultery than to be at church. You know, and, and I understand, you know, people need to be held accountable for their sins, you know, but but not at the expense of, of following Jesus. Not at the expense, if, you, if you're skipping church and, and or you're skipping your Bible reading and, and you're going out there and trying to accuse people of things and tempting people of things, um, you need to be in your proper place. You need to be in your proper place. Also, you know, what else do we see them doing? You know, instead of, instead of trying to get this woman to change her ways, right, and, and helping her and, and loving her, you know, they just wanted to condemn her. They wanted to throw her under the bus. They wanted to get her stoned to death, right? You know, and actually, you know, the Bible says they were actually trying to tempt Jesus. So this whole thing was, was all, all come together because they were trying to tempt Jesus, I mean, can you say with confidence that, you know, even with your red pill rage, you know, against against women, are you sure that you're not rebelling against Christ? You know, can you say that you're not just trying to pass the blame off like Adam passed the blame off, you know? Now, I'm not here passing the blame off of anybody, okay? I'm here trying to help men and women, you know, get back on track because, you know, we all have a common enemy. We all have a common enemy. Satan, the devil. So don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, adultery is wicked as hell. You know, it's, it's actually one of the most sinful things that you can do. You know, it's the seventh commandment. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, when, you, when you're committed to somebody, you know, and, and, and you go behind their back and, and you cheat on them, you know, there's a reason that adultery, you know, is... Is a, is a sin that carries the death penalty in the Bible, you know, I, I'm, so I'm not downplaying what she did, you know, but, but, but how did these men react, you know, they let her sin keep them from church, right, they were so busy pointing the finger at her that they skipped Jesus's lesson in the morning, you know, so I, I want to discuss some ideas on, on, on how we can expose people for their sin, you know, expose the sin, but do so in a loving way uh, as to where instead of focusing on punishing people for that sin, we're actually going to try to reform them, right? Instead of driving them away from us, we join forces with them. We team up against our common enemy, you know, the devil. We create allies with our women, you know. We want them to fight with us, not against us, you know. So by calling these women out here um, whores and, and, and prostitutes and thoughts and, and things like that, you know. I mean, maybe they are. Maybe they are. But, you know, what's what good is it going to do if you just bash them all the time, right? How is that going to help her overcome that, 
you know, is what I'm, is what I'm saying, you know. How often do I hear, you know, these MGTOW men preach against, you know, preach against how the women or, or you know, the blue pill world, they call it shaming tactic, right? Oh, that's shaming. You're just shaming, you know. But then they turn around and they do the same thing. And, and, they, and they try to shame the other people to stay on the plantation, right? Shaming tactics not really a good tactic to use. Look, I'm not saying that that these modern women are, are um, that what you know that what they're doing is is not a shameful thing to do, right? That's not what I'm saying. Um, but you can't fight fire with fire, okay? Um, you want to put out that fire, and and you want to make a difference in the world. Or, or, or do you want to just keep complaining about how the world is? Is that what you want to do? Because me, I want to make a difference. I want, to, I want to change the world for a better place. So if you want to keep complaining without bringing any real solutions to the table, then by all means, switch off this video and, and uh, go watch somebody complain. You know? um, but I'm here to fix things. I'm a man, I'm a man here who, who's looking at the problem and, and I'm coming up with solutions on how we can fix things. I'm a creative thinker. I'm an inventor. You know, this is what men do. I'm here to create the medicine that our society needs to bring men and women back together. You know, and I'm telling you guys right now, nobody likes being exposed. You don't like being exposed. I don't like being exposed. Nobody likes being exposed, you know, and, and if the day ever comes up when you get exposed, you're going to be praying to God <laughs> that somebody's right there uh, with you to help you get out of it, you know, rather than just throwing you under the bus and saying, stone him to death, right? So, the first idea that I'm going to share with you guys is this. When you, when you witness somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing, right? You know, something that goes against the Bible. Like, for example, you caught them in adultery or something like that, right? Remember, it's, it's not your job to punish them, okay? We, we need, what our job is, is to warn them that what they're doing is wrong, you know? Um, God is the, is the one who's going to judge them and punish them. We can only just warn people, but we need to be graceful in our approach, meaning we don't want to turn them against us. You know what I mean? We we need to let them know that we care about them. You know, we care about you because, you know, it's very, it could be very traumatic psychologically to somebody, you know, meaning, you know, um, when somebody exposes you or, or you expose somebody, it can literally drive somebody to depression and, and, and eventually lead them to call, commit suicide, right? It's a very serious thing. And, and, and I think the statistics are somewhere up to like 55 men a day commit suicide in this, in this, in this, just in this country, I think. Um, fact check me on that, you know. Um, that's just what I, what I remember, but I'm not sure. But anyway, you can actually cause somebody very, very more damage than, than they're already in, you know, and, and drive them into a, a, a deeper depression, you know, and that should not be our goal. You know, our goal is not to bash people and, and make them weaker. You know, we want to lift people up. Our goal is to ultimately get them to repent, you know, and, and we want to help people overcome that sin and make the world a better place and, and not, and just like Jesus said, go and sin no more. We don't, you know. I'm talking about full recovery without relapse, you know? Say, well, okay, what do you, what do you recommend, Sean? What do you, what do you recommend? Well, most importantly, <laughs> do not, and I repeat, do not attack the person personally, okay? What you want to do is, is, is make them your ally, you know? And tell them, hey, we have a common ally, Satan, the devil, you know, and and we want to we want to um, work together to fight him, you know. Like for example, let me use an example. Let's say you go over to a friend's house one day, and you show up, and your friend he answers the door, and 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 he's just wasted out of his mind, you know. He's drunk. You can smell it off him. Um, you see, you see the empty uh, whiskey bottles all over the place. He's throwing up. I mean. You can see that he's had way too much to drink. And, you know, instead of beating him upside the head with a stick and, and telling him, oh, you're a loser, man. You're a bum, dude. You're, you're a drunk. I'm out of here, dude. You're you're nothing. You're, you're going down. You know, instead, what if you approach him and say, hey, bro, 
listen, man, I care about you, and that, that, that alcohol is destroying you, bro. You know, it's wicked as hell. You know, it's destroying our friendship. To hell with this crap. You know, I hate this alcohol. You know, I don't like seeing, I don't like seeing you like this, bro. Let's get rid of this garbage together, huh? Let's get rid of this. Let's, 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 let's destroy this crap. You know, because, you know, it's a, it's a real sad thing to watch somebody you love, you know, fall into sin and, and destroy themselves, you know. And, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll still push you away. Even, even if you approach them gracefully like this and caring and loving, you know, they'll still push you away. So, you know, and it really hurts because, you know, that person needs a lot of help. And, and the last thing they, they need right there in that moment is, is somebody reminding them how, how bad they screwed up. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you put, and if they push you away, okay, just tell them, hey, I love you. I'm going to be here for you whenever, whenever you um, decide you want some help, you know, because I love you. And, and, you know, I'll pray for you. I'll be praying for you. But my point is this. It's way more effective way um, to not put the blame on them. You know, they don't need more burdens on their shoulders, you know. Um, they're already dealing with this sin that's that's destroying them. You know, they don't need somebody else putting more on their shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just let them know you care about them. Let them know that you're there for them. Let them know that you're not going anywhere, right? So let them know, you're let them know you care. Let them know you're there. And let them know you ain't going anywhere, right? Um, what are you saying, Sean, that, you know, that, that that person shouldn't take responsibility for their own life choices? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. You know, I'm, I'm just saying it's it's not as effective to help them overcome that sin if if, if you're just bashing them and reminding them of how, how how bad they screwed up. It's like you know we're not dogs. You know, you don't take a dog and rub his face in his, his in his own feces. You know what I'm saying? When you expose them. You do so because you care, you know, you don't point the finger at them and because that's just going to get them angry, you know, it's just going to get them to turn against you and and you're probably the only person who actually cares about them who can help them, you know what I mean? Because So the last thing you want to do is, is get them to turn against you, you know, because you actually are the person who cares, like you're their lifeline. You know, you, you wouldn't be saying anything to them in the first place if you didn't care about them, right? If you if you didn't want them to change the way they are, you know? So I think a lot of the MGTOW community comes off as, you know, the women are just, they're just getting angry at us because there's they don't see like that. We actually care. You know, the reason we're talking and we're making these videos because we care. Um, so basically what I'm saying is this, you know, it's a lot more effective um, to become allies against a common enemy than it is to make them feel like they're the enemy, right? For example, you think women want to cheat on their men, you know? No, no, they don't want to cheat on their men. But, you know, the society we live in, the temptations are just so great. They're all the way around. Uh, they're just consumed by it. It's all around them. And, you know, the access is, is just in their face, Right? I mean, I, I go to the store and you look at the women's section and it's like, well, how do you even dress modestly as a woman? Because all the clothes I see are just a bunch of immodest, you know, like no good clothes, just revealing clothes. All these designer clothes are just, it's, this is garbage, right? And that's the only thing that's out there, right? So the temptations are great. Our, it's, it's almost like our society is structured in such a way, it's, it's literally designed for people to fail. It's designed for people to fail, you know? And, you know, I'll turn the focus on us men, you know, because I'll, I'll turn the focus on us men for a second. You know, you think men enjoy watching pornography? You know, instead of having a family and having a wife and children, you know, to take care of them? No way. No, no, it's a shame. It's a shame for a man. But, you know, guys, guys are like, well, what other option do I have? You know, it's, yeah, I can't go out and get married. It's too dangerous, you know? And, and, it's not easy. It's not easy to overcome the sin, you know, but, but until we get to work, um, things aren't going to change, you know, things aren't going to change, you know, men, 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 a lot of the time they do these things, um, they'll get into drugs and alcohol and things, you know, and pornography and, and self pleasure, um, to escape the reality. Um, it, it's a coping mechanism. That's what the real problem is. Is they're trying to just numb the numb the the pain of, of um, existing in a society that's so sinful, 
and and the temptations are just um it seems like they're just you're surrounded by it you know i'm talking about real societal problems here you know instead of shaming men instead of shaming we uh, women um it's it's almost like blaming the victim in a way you know just like just like in the garden of eden you know eva was tricked she was tricked you know she said i i they, he tricked me okay and and after god kicked him out of the garden of eden it wasn't going to do Adam and Adam any good to point the finger at Eve, right? I mean, shoot. He just said, shoot, man. We both screwed up, right? I mean, he couldn't point the finger at her any more than she could point their finger at him because they both sinned, right? So, you know, people use sin as like an outlet for real life problems, you know, but that they're having trouble overcoming, you know? And, and you know what? Men are stronger when, when women are in, her, in their proper role. And women are stronger when she's in her proper role and the man's in his proper role, you know? Men and women can help each other fight the devil off, right? You know, families are stronger when, when they work as a team and a family unit, you know? But, but, but you can look at the statistics, you know? Um, children who grow up with a mom and a dad in the house, a traditional family, are, are more likely to uh, become more mentally stable, more um, productive and, and things like this, but uh, we have to be unified, you know, a family has to be unified against the, the enemy, the common enemy, the devil, and, and what we need, what we really need right now in the MGTOW community is we need godly men to rise up and, and take a stand for, for, for the, um, the truth and, and take the lead and start resisting the devil, you know, I was watching a video the other day or some woman was comparing bananas with avocados and, and or something like that. You see that video? <laughs> anyway, she was basically pointing the blame on men, you know, and for pumping and dumping women, right? And and of course, you know, men turned right back around and said, "Wow, well, no, it's your fault, women. You you mis you made the mistake. You chose." And so at the end of the day, both people are pointing the finger at each other, and then nothing's getting done, right? And I'm sitting here watching this video, thinking thinking of how the scribes and the Pharisees reacted, right? And it's like, you're so busy pointing a finger at other people, trying to tempt other people, that you skipped church altogether. You know, you, you didn't get the lesson Jesus had for you, you know? So so I guess what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to challenge you guys, you know, not only to recognize who the enemy is, the devil, Satan, but also start fighting the devil, you know? You have to pick up your Bible, Wipe the dust off, you know, if you have to, you know, because it's the only tool that we have in defeating our common enemy, you know, the one who's out to destroy both of both of the sexes, you know, so we need not to bash the other other women, you know, we don't have to bash the, the blue pilled men, you know, we don't have to bash the feminists, we don't have to, you know, let let them know that, hey, we have a common enemy and, and, and we desperately need you on our side, you know, because our enemy is a very formidable enemy. He's very formidable, to say the least, right? So, listen guys, I'm not saying to go out there and be Captain save -a -ho, right? Um, you can't help somebody who doesn't want your help. You just can't. You could lead a horse to water, but you can't let make them drink, so to speak, right? But like I said, you know, it's way more effective to tell this person, hey, you know, I need you. You know, you're important. I need you on my side. You know, we need to fight the devil together, you know, because he's such a trickster. You know, he, uh, I need all the help I can get. You know, I need you on my side to help me, you know, and and and, you, and what we need to do is lift each other up and, and restore this person's confidence in themselves and, and and let them know that, hey, I'm here for you. And and most of all, you know, we need to remind them how important they are and how special they are. You know, because the sin will get in, will get into them, and, and and the devil will get inside of them and tell them, "Hey, you, you, you're a failure. You know, just quit, just give up. It's over. I, you're defeated." And we have to remind them, "No, no, you're you're special. God loves you. You know, you have talents. God has given you gifts that you know only you possess these gifts, and and we need you on on the team, the good side. We need to restore you." You know, rather than telling them uh, how crappy of a person they are, um, you know, we need to remind them, hey, how amazing of a person they are. And, you know, I know I know a lot of a lot of you guys, a lot of you MGTOW guys say, no way, Sean. You know, I already tried that. 
Um, the woman left me. She didn't want me to help. Okay, look, I get it, man. I get it. You know, maybe she left you, okay? But that doesn't mean that there isn't a woman out there who will listen to you, who will um, stick with you and, and listen and take and follow your lead, your leadership, you know? And, and, and so what we need to do as men is we need to start playing a new song because, you know, the devil has us dancing to his tune and, and, and we, we realize what his tune ends up killing us, right? It destroys our lives, but we can change a station, you know, we can, we can start dancing to a new tune, this tune of the Bible, and we can start playing that one and we can get, uh, we can get people to start dancing to that tune. You know what I mean? Um, we can say, hey, look, there's a new sheriff in town laying down the law, you know, no more adultery, no more skipping church, you know, no more uh, drugs, no more alcohol, no more pornography, you know, zero tolerance around here. You know, listen, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. OK, so the more you obey the commandments, the easier it gets. You know, I'm telling you, you'll get stronger the more you resist the devil the more he will flee from you. And like I said, remember how I told you in the start of the video, I don't make these videos necessarily for you guys. You know, I mean, I, I care about you guys, but at the same time, you know, I learn. I learn more when I teach, you know. You, you ask a teacher, ask any teacher, and they'll tell you, hey, when you try to teach something, that's when you learn it even better, you know. So it's the same way. When, when you start following the commandments, and you start teaching and helping other people to follow the commandments and, and, re, and, and lifting them up, that's when you start getting lifted up and you even get stronger, you know? And, 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 and then you have somebody who's watching your back. So if you stumble, somebody pick you up, you know what I mean? So, so don't go out there and, and think that you're better than everybody just because, oh man, I, st I obey the commandments, so I'm better than you. No. <laughs> No, you go out there very humbly and remind and remember you need them just as much as they need you, you know, healing the sick and, and casting out devils from people. You know, that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, you know, to care for other people and be patient with them as they're as they're overcoming their um, addictions or whatever it is. And you can keep yourself busy. You can keep yourself so busy helping other people. That you don't have time to fall into sin yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it, it helps you. You need other people um, to help you stay away from um, committing sin yourself, right? So in, in, in a way, you almost need them more than they need you. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's harder to um, stay out of sin than it is to overcome your sin. You know what I mean? So, so you don't want to fall back into sin. Um, what it, what good is a teacher without any students you know what a good is a doctor without any patients um type of thing you know so in closing what can i say remember we're all human we all make mistakes in this life nobody's going to get out of this life um without falling into some kind of sin at some point in their life right you know the bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god all of us all of us come short okay so you know, also remember, there's not going to be a lot of people who are going to even hear this message that I'm preaching right now. And and the few of you who do, you know, even fewer of you are, are going to actually put this message into practice, you know. So just remember, those of you who will put this message into practice and will hear this message, you know, just be like the Spartans who, who defeated the Persians, you know. Remember, we don't we don't need big numbers. We don't need a massive army. You know, because we have superior tactics. We have the truth. We're, we're, we're more dedicated warriors because we're not fighting fire with fire, you know. And we have the moral high ground because we have God on our side, you know. If God be for us, who can be against us, you know. Jesus, he already conquered death. He did the hard work, you know. So you don't think he can cover you up when you get exposed? Remember, nobody wants to be exposed. So, so what I'm saying is our modern society is like a nuclear wasteland. You know, there's radiation all around us and, and any one of us can get exposed to it at any time. So without the word of God, without the Bible, without the commandments, um, we're all, we all can get exposed. Um, but those of us who have the truth 
and who walk in the truth and abide in the truth, you know, we can heal people. We can heal this world. You know, we can be the salt of the earth. So don't forget, you know, our mission isn't to go out there and expose people, you know, but rather to keep ourselves pure and unspotted from the world. And, and, and if we waste all of our energy and all our time exposing people and pointing fingers at people, you know, that's, that's time we could have spent, um, uh, finding the person who actually wants our help, who needs our help, you know, don't, so don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees and, and skip church in the morning and, because you're out there pointing fingers at people, you know, and you're so busy exposing um, everybody else for their sins, you know, remember, we have a tough enemy, we have a tough enemy, the devil is tough, so don't take your sights off the target, because, because if you're, if you're so busy yelling at somebody else, you know, he might hit you, right, but, but the good news is this, you know, God did not leave us without the tool, Without the tools that we need to fight off the devil. You know, he gave us everything that we need, you know. So it's not to say it's going to be an easy fight. And then we won't ever defeat the enemy until Jesus comes back. But we can stand our ground right now. We can stand our ground so sin does not destroy us even further than it already is, right? We can stand our ground, maintain, and not lose any more ground so, so he doesn't defeat us, right? So... That's my message, and um, fall in line, gentlemen, because uh, the fight continues. The fight presses on, and, and the devil's not taking a day off, so you need to wake up every day, get your Bible in you, get the Holy Spirit in you, pray to God, get, um, tell Him to give you the strength that you need to fight this enemy. Um, anyway, that's my message. Uh, thank you for listening, and God bless you all, and be strong and be of good courage. Um, remember, the Lord God is with you. Wherever you go. As usual, I'm going to uh, give God the last word on this. And, I, and, um, and I'll see you all in the next video. God bless. I'm going to read from um, the book of Ephesians. Chapter number 6, verses 10 through 20. God bless. Bible reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take, under your, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having your breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which, in the word, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching, therefore, unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in bonds and therein i may speak boldly as i ought to speak amen